At the beginning, I want to thank you to uh, Mr. Banzi and Mr. Nivošević for invitations to have a lecture today, and also to say that it's, a ple that it's an honor for me to be a part of this great meeting. As you already heard, I'm coming from Serbia, from Belgrade, and this is the hospital where I work, and I'm holding a position of head of clinical dentistry in the military medical academy. Also, I'm director of postgraduate studies of oral implantology, I'm lecturing at two faculties, and I'm ICOI diplomat for Serbia. Thinking how to start today's lecture, I decided to present you this case, and if we compare these two central incisors, we can see that the marginal gingival level is in pretty the same level, that we have a presence of mesial and absence of distal papilla, that we are having a gray shade, that we are having a gray shade above the uh, right incisor, and then we are talking about white aesthetic is not so good. What's about this case? I made this picture a few months ago. The patient came to my office intending to change the crown. And this crown and this implant were placed 23 years ago. And you can see uh, the reason of extraction was the fracture of the tooth, and I performed the immediate implant placement. At that time, using our domestic implant system, I using the PTF membrane, which was Gore-Tex membrane, and using the free elite, what was synthetic hydroxyapatite. It was in the past, but what are the demands of the modern implantology? On the first place, good aesthetic. Second, we, have, we need to have a long-term stability of soft and hard tissue. And finally, we need to have minimize the appearance of peri-implantitis and other complications. Following the time of implant placement, to know, today we know that there are four types of placing implant after the extraction. According to the modern literature, we know that the most of the implants were placed following type 1 and type 2, which means in the period up to eight weeks after the extraction. Decision whether immediate or early uh, implant approach should be utilized depends on the numerous of the factors. First of all, the personal philosophy of evidence base, buccal plate integrity, gingival biotype, implant diameter, position of implant using the grafts or in connective tissue grafts, and finally, provisional or not. Today, as you heard, I'm going to talk about immediate implant placements and precondition for improved aesthetic, and the previous factors are going to be the essence of my lecture. But because before I start to present the cases, we need to know what's happening after the tooth extraction and what are the consequences of the tooth loss, because there are too many consequences. First, related to the patient, because the patient doesn't see the resorption. She, he feels the loss of confidence, limitation of food, of food choice, and many other factors which make patient everyday life inconvenient. When we talk about the consequences which are related to the dentist, we always saw the vertical and the horizontal positional changes of the tooth, reduction of the interocular space, and many other things. And finally, if we talk about the consequences which are related to the implantologist, we always see a resorption, resorption as a result of surgical trauma and many factors which are mentioned here. If we want to better understand the resorption patterns, we need to know something about anatomy and physiology. We need to know that the alveolar process is the bone which is surrounding fully erupted tooth. And because of that, morphological characteristics are related to the size and shape of tooth, the site of tooth eruption, and inclination of the erupted tooth. But we need to know that the teeth tend to erupt and incline in position which does not fit the middle of the basal bone. There is a paper which was presented by Joe Kane, and he gave us the classification of sagittal root position in relation to anterior maxillary osseous housing, and he finds that in 81% we have a root which is positioned against the labial cortical plate. After the extraction socket undergone some structural and morphological changes, we can be divided in three phases, and all of them take three up to six months. How can we observe the healing of the socket? Clinically, with the closure of the socket with firm epithelial tissue, which happens between 10 and 20 weeks, and radiographically, with bone filling of the socket, which happens 
free up to six months. What we know today about the resorption, horizontal and vertical resorption occurs. The horizontal is more pronounced than vertical, it's more pronounced in the buccal, buccal region than in the palatal region, and it is more pronounced in the molar region than in the frontal. We also know that the most of the dimensional changes are happens into the first three months. If you want to have a long-term stability of implant, we need to have at least one millimeter of the bone around, except from the buccal side, where we need at least two millimeter. Now the question is, how can the buccal bone wall, which is in 85% thinner than one millimeter, in 50% thinner than 0.5 millimeter, and just in 11.4 millimeter uh, percent thicker than one millimeter, how can these buccal bone walls provide us a two millimeter of new bone formation? There's a paper which was presented by Chain in 2007, and he said vertical and horizontal absorption occurs even when the facial defect is grafted. So, accept that the facial bone wall will resorb and reconstruct the facial bone wall. Why are, we, why, are we losing, why are we losing the buccal bones? The main thing is we go, uh, we're losing the vascularization because we don't have so much blood in the bone vessel uh, from the cortical thin layer. Also, when we're having vascularization for our periodontal ligament, we lose this part when we extract the tooth. And finally, if we have a vascularization from cambium layer or periosteum, we also lose this kind of vascularization with razor flap. Losing the vascularization, we are having a resorption. Also, we need to know that there is a bundle bone, which is the part of periodontium, not the part of the buccal bone plate, and its width is from 0.2 up to 0.4 millimeters. There's a paper which was presented by Arujo and Linde, and then find that there was a significant difference in resorption between the buccal and the lingual plates, and that the most of the resorption happens between four and eight weeks. This is also the interesting study which was presented by Boozer and the group, and they measure the level of resorption of the buccal plate immediately after extraction and eight weeks later. And they measure in the center and the proximal position. And what did they find? If, if they have the buccal bone wall which is thinner than one millimeter, they find that, we, that they have a resorption up to 7.5 millimeters in vertical way. But the most important thing is, this vertical resorption is happening just in central position. In the proximal parts, we still have a bone, so we have a defect with two bone wall, which is easy to reconstruct and which is easy and predictable. So just to conclude with this part, if we have a support with a thin facial bone wall, which is thinner than one millimeter, it's enough for two. But for implant, we need at least two millimeter from the buccal side. Now question, how to minimize bone resorption after extraction? We can go in two ways. The one is to go with our rich preservation and the other to go with implant placement. But we know today that if we go with immediate implant placement, we would not stop the resorption. Just in situation when we are going together with immediate implant placement and immediate loading, we can reduce in some percentage the resorption of the bone. So why are we talking so much about the immediate procedure? After 30 years in implantology, I asked myself how the modern implantology should look like. And for sure to be accurate, three-dimensional, highly comfortable, with, followed by immediate provisionalization, flapless and cost-effective. Cost but the main question is, what about the patient perception? Are they interested in our three-dimensional computer planning? Are they interesting, are we going to place implant flap or flapless? And finally, are they interesting in design of implant which are we are placing? The answer is no. Only the amount of the patient is short treatment time, aesthetic result, few visits, minimal discomfort, a reasonable cost. And in this situation, I gave, me, gave them an, uh, immediate procedures. Why immediate procedures? Because these immediate procedures immediate improvement of quality of the life. What about the clinicians? We know that we have a fewer cl uh, clinical sessions and treatment time reduced in the chair. 
This makes a possibility of reduce of cost, one surgical time, good aesthetic result, and satisfied patient. And what about the literature? We know that the immediate procedure preserve the soft tissue. We know also that we given a significant regrowth of the mesial papilla of the period of one up to three years. And also we know that the mid facial recession is, I will a redu a reduction as a 0.75 millimeters uh, instead in the conventional methods. Now the main complication of immediate implant placement are the recession, discoloration, and incisal fascia contour or collapse on incisal fascia contour. In order to prevent this complication, we need to, to have some prerequisites for implant placement. We need to know how to place implant in correct three dimension, how to choose the right implant diameter, how to achieve a good primer stability, and which implant design should be used, and to have excessive or favorable defect morphology. I'm just going to remind shortly about the good 3D position. When we are talking about 3D, 3D dimension or maze decimal position, we need that implant should be placed no closer than 1.5 millimeters to the tooth, or if we have a two implants in the aesthetic region, the distance should be three millimeter. But the most important, how can we going to place the implant in apical coronal position? The guys from ITI said that as shallow as possible as this is necessary. But what does it mean in immediate procedure? If we have a marginal gingival level, which is in the same level as a Jason tooth, or if it is going coronally, we can place the implant three millimeter apically. But if it is marginal gingival level is apically, then you need to follow the cement to enamel junction and you need to place implant two millimeter apically. But there is also one more thing. If we deal with the implants which are with narrow diameter, we need to place at least four millimeter apical because we need to have enough way to make an adequate emergence profile. What about the buccal lingual position? Implants should be placed one millimeter palatally from the line which is connecting the two adjacent tooth. This is the right position, and if we compare with the position where was the root tip and where is the, our ideal osteotomy place, you can see where is the position of implant. <clears throat> and what about the implant angulation? We know that implants should be positioned in such manner that straight abutment imitate the position of naturally granite teeth. We can say that this is right position, but two years before ago, Steigman presented this approach, and honestly, I don't agree with this approach because why should we place an augmented bone in the region where the bone never present? Again, to remind you on this Jokan uh, investigation and paper, to say that the rules a position in 81% up to the labial cortical plane. Why is this important? We make a study and measured more than 500 situations in order to see which is the uh, average angle which we have in the position of implant when we do immediate implant placement. And we find that this average angle is 20 degrees. Why is this important? Because we know from literature, if we have the angle which is up to the 15 degree, we can, we can have an excess hole of the screw which is positioned on the palatal side. Otherwise, if the angle is more than 15 degrees, we are giving the access call on the incisal on the, the buccal plate. Also, paper from Joe Kahn, and he tried to find an incidence of achievable screw retained single crowns, and he measured at least 1,200 cases and found that just in 20% with the centrals, 9 with laterals, and 5 with the canines, you can put immediately the screw on the palatal side. Why is this important? One of my cases when I place the implant and when I make the temporary crown, the screw access hole is going just on the incisal edge and you know that we are going to have a bad aesthetic result. But today even in B&B have a good aesthetic position and this uh, angulated screw abutment we can, which can compensate the, the angle up to 25 degrees. And this was the final solution. So we compensate the angle, we have a screw access hole on the palatine side, and I think we have a good 
aesthetic result. This is the table which was given by Palacci, and we can see, we can see in this situation, we can see in this situation that just if we have the optimal position of implant, we are going to have ideal aesthetic, biomechanic, phonetics, and hygiene. Now, next question is how to choose the right diameter in, of implant. In the late 90s and beginning of 2000, we think that we need to have implant with wider diameter. But today we know that this wider diameter actually contributes to more pronounced our bone resorption. We need to have at least space of the bone from which the osso integration is going to start. So how to choose the right diameter? We know today that the horizontal resorption is 1.2 up to 1.4 millimeters from the buccal side. We also know that we need at least 2 millimeters from that side and 1 millimeter from the palatal side. If we count it, it means 4.2 millimeter. So, we make a study and measure more than 1,000 axes, meaning the distance between the buccal and palatal side. And we find the average distance in this situation. According to average distance, we make a table uh, to give you idea what's the, what diameter of implant should you use. So, in situation when this distance is lower than 7.5 millimeters, we are supposed to, do the, to use the narrow diameter. If it is from 7.5 up to 8, the diameter from 3.5 up to 3.7, and finally, if the diameter is more than 8 millimeters, the diameter of implant we can use is 4 millimeters on more. Now, back to the table. It not, was not a surprise for us that in lateral incisor, we should place at least 73% of narrow diameter of implant. But it was a very big surprise that in central incisor, we, place, we need to place at more 40% of implant which are having the narrow diameter. Now, a little bit about the primer stability. We know there's three factors which can we can increase the primal stability. First, the distance from the root apex to the nearby anatomical structure, then the palatal bone quantity and implant design. The primal stability of immediate implant placement are a little bit different than conventional methods. So, we are having the osteoclastic activity just 48 hours after the implant placement and it's go up to two weeks. Also, if we want to have a good primer stability, we need at least three to five millimeters in the apical region, and also we need to have a big amount of palatal bone to have a good primer stability. This is a study which I pre which, what I presented, which I presented in 2014 in Berlin, and the aim of study was to analyze the different design of implant in achieving the primer stability. And you can see, I use the three different design. I place the implants on the depth of the five and seven millimeters, and these were the results. And the best result presented the blue sky Braden, but the worst one presented by Osseo Speed Astra. One year later, also Joe Kahn presented the same study, very similar, and he found the same results. The worst result was Astra Osseo Speed. And one thing which is also important he found that we have a better primer stability with the conical kind of implant than the implant which are having parallel balls. Now, this is a study which I done in 2009 here in Bologna together with Professor Ruggeri, and we tried to find if there are impact of the threads on the primer stability of implant, and we used two different kind of implants. One with a narrow pitch, meaning that the distance between the threads was 0.5 millimeter, and the other one when with wide pitch, when we have a distance between the thread, which was 1.5 millimeter. It was an experimental study, and what we measure? We measured the bone implant contact, we measured the gap area, and the percentage of host bone chips. And what we found in our investigation? Something similar which you see in the pterygoid implant. When the, when the implant was in the cortical part, 
the better result we have with the implant which having the narrow pitch, so smaller distance between the threads. But when we go into the spongious bone, in the trabecular bone, we have much better result in all the categories when we have the wide pitch of implant. Why is this important? Because the mechanical environment of immediate implant placement is a little bit different than the mechanical environment of the con uh, co uh, in the conventional method. Why? Because we have the connection just be between the threads and the bone when we immediately place implant, and still the gap is outside of the contact of the bone. And why is this important? Because there is investigation from the Helms, and he finds that we have a zone of the high strain, zone when we, there where the thread is in the contact of the bone, and in this region we don't have osteoblastic activity. The most osteoblastic activities are in the other zone, which is the zone of the low strain, the zone where we have a gap between the threads. So this is very important also. If we want to place implant, especially with aggressive threads, we can do it in the situation we have a big amount of the bone. So go with evolution in this situation. But if you have a small amount of the palatal bone, it's better to go with 3P. Why? Because the aggressive threads can displace implant buccally and jeopardize the buccal bone wall. We also need to know how far is the bone below the facial gingiva. And there is investigation presented by Kois, and he finds that just if this distance is 3 millimeter or lower, we are going to have a stable situation. Otherwise, we are going to have unstable situation. Also very important for immediate implant placement is the biotype of the gingiva. Now to go to the case, the first important thing is to, give, to have a minimally traumatic extraction. What does it mean to use aggressive bone root elevators or periotomes or piezo surgery and do, don't do extraction with raising the flap. Wait to finish extraction and then start to raise the flap. When you finish extraction, you can do some things. First of all, are we going to curettage the periodontal ligament from the alveolus? Yes, but just in case where the reason of extraction was infection. Otherwise, don't do it. Why? Because there is a paper presented by Helms that after extraction, periodontal ligament ankylosis, and like that, it contributes in very big amount of the new bone also integration. After that, we are going to place implant in the correct 3D position, which gave us formation of the gap between the implant and the buccal bone wall. Now the question is, which kind of GBR procedure are we going to perform in this situation? There are three approaches. First one, if the gap is up to 1.5 millimeters, don't do anything. The second one is, just fill the gap with the bone and place the membrane. And the third one is, fill the gap and fill the bone against the buccal bone wall and then place the membrane. I prefer this third approach and beside that I also place the bone substitute occlusally. Why? Because I want first reason is I want to have a good shape and good support for the bone which is uh, placed on the buccal side. Why? Because there is a paper presented by Stereo and he show us that he find that a approximately about 50% of bone which was placed horizontally was displaced of resorbs after the three months. Why we need to grasp gap? Because today we, need, we know that if the distance between the implant and the buccal bone wall is 1.5 millimeter, we are having approximately about 60% of contact. But if the, this gap is getting wider, up to four millimeter, this contact decreased up to or low to 30 degrees or 30 percent. And why we need to grasp from the buccal side? Because from literature we know if we don't grasp from the buccal side, we're going to have a recession which occurs in a period from five up to seven years. What about the soft tissue? We need to know that also we are going to wait, we need to wait at least one year to make any uh, decision about uh, the c condition of the soft tissue. First of all about black triangles and the second part about the scar tissue. You need to wait and 
really, if you do everything okay, everything is going to be finally with the soft tissue in a good aesthetic manner. The second reason why I'm placing the graft occasionally is this part. You can see the particles of the graft. These particles are not integrated. They are just incorporated in the soft tissue, but they are giving me a good support for the papilla. And you can see the stable situation even 10, 10 years later, still the situation is the same. Just to conclude this part, the paper from Wang and Lang, and they say that the position of implants is essential, and also that the simultaneous GBR procedure could partially resolve our bone resorption. If you, correct, if you follow this protocol, and you have a correct 3D position, and also if you have a good GBR procedure, you may avoid need for connective graft tissue augmentation. Even you can see this situation, we have a stable bone level in the five years, even we have a problem. What problem was? After the immediate implant placement, patient doesn't have enough time to wait in our country for the final restoration. She make it in another country, and you can see there is a misfit between the implant abutment and the crown. And this misfit, misfit caused the placing marginal gingival level slightly apically and caused the infection. Finally, after one year, she had enough time to come to Belgrade and to make another definite crown. So we removed the previous uh, work, we make individual abutment, and we make the final restoration. And because we have a correct position, we have a good GBR procedure, the margin on gingival level is again in the same level as adjacent teeth. And again, again these are the particles of the bone which are not in integrated and which give me a good support. Just to conclude this part of the lecture, you can see these are elements for low and high risk. And for sure we need to and we want to have this part of elements in order to have a good result and good aesthetic score. What are the advantages of the immediate implant placement? For sure, shorter teeth and tie, preservation of soft tissue morphology, and better immediate aesthetic. What are the disadvantages? The risk of mucosal recession and skilled operation is really acquired. Now, just a few moments or a few minutes about to talking about a complication. The most of complication came as a result of wrong choice of diameter of implant on the, or inadequate position of implant. And in the both situation, we are going to lose the bone and we are going to have a recession. This is the first case where the, is in the uh, indication of extraction was because we have a root fracture and also root fracture which was followed by infection. These are the possible solutions how to, to solve the infection. After the extraction, we raise the flap and the big defect in the apical region occur. Because of this defect, I place implant slightly buccally because I need to find an anchor implant into the palatal side. At that time, I think that this was a good position for the implant and it doesn't want to cause any problems because the implant is still on the edge. I performed the GBR procedure and after two months, because patient was in a hurry, we need to place the final restoration. But she came back after one year and you can see the recession occurs, the discoloration occurs and we need to do something. So we, we remove the crown and this was the starting position of the soft tissue. What were the potential risk factors in this situation? First of all, she was heavy smoker, she has a thin biotype, vestibular position of implant, and also we don't have a viability in the apical region. Because of that, we have a recession. You know that we are having a mid-facial intradental or combination of these two recessions. These are the etiological factors which are coming from the surgical part and prosthetic part. If we think in the surgical way, we need to know that it's not so easy because if we have a recession on the natural tooth, we are having a vital biological structure. Otherwise, when you're having a recession in implant, we are having a non metal structure 
problem vascularization, and contaminated implant surface. So be cautious when you try to go with the surgery. There is a paper which was presented by Stefan Chu and Tarnal, and they said that don't go with the surgery. Go one step back with the prosthetic parts to try to solve the problem. How to do it? Go with the individual abutment, which is going to be screw retained, go with the flat design, and go with the concave emergency profile. So we did it. We start to build the new soft tissue. This was the position, and this was the final result of our going step back. And this was okay for us to place another crown, and even it's not a top aesthetic, I should say that it's stable for the five years. Next case, patient came to our office with the two crowns, ceramic crowns, together connected with the pink crown, which is simulating the central papilla. When we raise the lip, you can see, obviously, infection on the both of the central parts. When we make CBCT, we can see on the right place, there is implant already placed, but implant as wider as not to be, and it incorporates the whole part of our process. Removing of this implant may cause big problems because we are going to have a vertical and horizontal defect. So I don't, I, I, I decide not to move, remove it. So next thing I remove first the crown on implant. Then I go with the surgery, extract the uh, left incisor. In the same time, I place the connective tissue graft on, uh, on the buccal side of the implant. This was positioned after eight months. I placed the implant which was with, with different design than the, the adjacent one and with a smaller diameter. And this was the starting position with the temporary crowns. We start to build the papillas. And this was the final position. We still want to do the surgery with the palatal flat, but the patient wasn't interested in this part. And finally, what to do in the situation with, if we have a bigger problem? Also, again, all, again Chu and Tarno gave us a suggestion. Go two steps back. The first one, go with the implant decoronation, so remove the crown. Then go with the connective tissue graph augmentation. Make the temporary bridge or temporary crown or whatever. And finally, when you have a good healing soft tissue, try to start to re, uh, make a retained uh, provisional restoration in order to have a good emergence profile. And finally, to conclude the whole lecture, there's a paper which was presented by Wan and Lang, and they analyzed about 46 prospective studies. What did they find? that annual failure, annual failure rate was 0 0.82, sorry. Very important, that soft tissue change occurred mostly in the first three months after the provision of restoration and then stabilized towards the end of the first year. So don't make any decision till the end of the first year. The timing of implant placement doesn't have K influence of achieving aesthetic outcomes. K selection and surgical skill with immediate implant placement are critical. And finally, that every Im immediate implant placement, if it's possible, should be followed by the immediate loading in order to have a good aesthetic result. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Professor Vlasic, for the complete and clear presentation. Very nice. Thank, thank you. you very much. Thank you. 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 Thank